If only the Flash could go back and erase all of 2022 for Ezra Miller. Gotta get back in time. What is going on everybody and welcome to my early review of DC's newest film, The Flash. I was lucky enough to check this out in Atlanta at a press screening last night, drove four hours to Atlanta and just about three and a half hours home. And this is the first time that I've actually said yes to doing that long strenuous drive to go and check out a movie early just because it was a 10 day advance on the movie's release date. So with this being an early review, I give you my word, there will be no spoilers whatsoever in my thoughts. I'm not going to talk Talk about anything that wasn't already released in the movie's trailers. So it goes without saying that The Flash has had a bit of a rocky road getting its way to the theaters. Now, this is a movie that has been in some form of development for quite a long time. It's been an active development for a number of years, maybe four or five years. There was a version of this that was gonna be a Flash and Cyborg team-up movie, and then that was eventually scrapped just to do a Flash film. Seven, eight, nine different directors came through, it seemed like. And then even after the movie got everybody in place there was covid then the movie got shot and then ezra miller lost their mind oh and yeah by the way the dc universe is completely resetting itself in two years and i will discuss briefly how all that plays into the movie experience if it does at all but talking specifically about the flash movie what i saw on screen the experience that these people put together for us the movie viewers i highly enjoyed what i saw but really quick before I dive into all of the reasons why I enjoyed what I saw, if you have the appetite of the Flash but don't quite have the super speed powers, and this summer would go much smoother for you if you had a lot of healthy, ready-to-eat meals available, then please check out the sponsor of today's video, Factor Meals. Well, summertime is here, the kids are out of school, and if you're anything like me in my household, it's gonna be really hard to find time to cook this summer. Oftentimes, the types of meals that my kids wanna enjoy are not the types of meals that's gonna allow me to stick to my diet unless I cook them something and then cook me something completely separate and that's just not practical. Factor meals have allowed me to stick to my diet and fitness goals by taking the work out of eating healthy and allowing me more time in my day to enjoy the summer with my kids. Factor meals allow you to skip the trip to the grocery store, the prepping, the chopping, the cleanup, and enjoy fresh never frozen meals that are ready in just two minutes. So all you have to do is heat, enjoy, and then head back outside to continue soaking up the summer. With over 34 chef prepared and dietitian approved meals, there's a variety of weekly options that will never allow you to fall victim to food fatigue. Plus, you can round out your meal and replenish your snack supply with over 45 different add-ons, such as apple cinnamon pancakes or fruit smoothies. So if you're looking to take the hassle out of healthy eating, head to factor75.com or click the link below and use code CODYLEACH50 to get 50% off of your first Factor box. That's 50% off by using the code CODYLEACH50 at the link in the video description or going to factor75.com. And thank you to Factor for partnering with me on today's sponsorship. Starting off with the positives for The Flash, as far as pure crowd-pleasing entertainment goes, this might be the biggest success of the DCEU. This is not my personal favorite of the DCEU, I can tell you that confidently right now, but as far as crowd-pleasing entertainment goes, getting all of the fans of these movies and these comics together in a big room and just having laughs and awes and fan service moments and action sequences and cameos and everybody just having a good time together. This is probably the best experience that I have had with a DCEU film. Oh my God! Flash! Oh my God! Hi. This is just a very purely entertaining movie. It is a lot of fun. It has its darker and more dramatic elements to the story that is spread throughout here and there, but it is much more of kind of a fun, adventurous type of film. There's time travel aspects into there and some of the classic elements that come with time travel movies. Of course, we've already seen in the marketing that Michael Keaton's Batman is coming back for the first time since 1992. You have Supergirl in here. And so the overall experience of The Flash happens to be a number of things. It's a very good, entertaining, standalone Flash film, which is the first that we have gotten. It is also a really cool, 
return to form for Michael Keaton's Batman and kind of seeing where he is at and getting all this nostalgia going for that. Getting Supergirl in here as a different form of a Kryptonian and bringing in a lot of those fans that haven't seen that character yet. It is also a multiverse movie, so you get all of the alternate events to some of our favorite films. My favorite film of the DCU, Man of Steel primarily. And then you also kind of have just a celebration of DC films in general, even beyond the DCEU, with Michael Keaton's Batman coming back and a few other things. And so for a movie that is kind of balancing so many different versions of appeal to so many different fans, I think that it kind of brought it all together for a really holistic experience that is a lot of enjoyment for all of us that are big fans of these movies and these characters, whether it's this iteration of DC or even past iterations of DC. Me personally, I'm a sucker for time travel films. Back to the Future is in my top five of all time, and there are so many others that take those classic time travel elements that are in my favorites, and this movie does a good job at bringing those in. Now, it turns into much more of a kind of a comic book movie by the second half of it, but the first half, especially when it's focusing primarily just on Barry Allen and the things that he's trying to do and trying to fix and trying to change in the timeline, I am always highly entertained with a movie's new take on that type of material. As far as performances all across the board, they're all really good. All of your personal feelings about Ezra Miller aside, and again, I will talk about that a little later, Ezra does very good in this movie. They do really good in the emotional moments especially, but I do feel like the goofier side, which is certainly prevalent in his version, his iteration of Barry Allen, is more entertaining here than it was in the previous movies that we've seen snippets of him in. There's also a second iteration of Barry Allen in this film that is there for most of the runtime. We've seen that in the trailers as well, and I thought that Ezra did a good job at giving that secondary Barry Allen a very different, distinct personality. It's a lot more heightened, a lot more hyper, a lot goofier, and even kind of dumber in certain ways to where even though they look identical and they have very similar mannerisms and personalities, they're two very distinct characters. I thought Michael Keaton did really good coming back. Now, again, this is not a Batman movie, so manage your expectations about how much Michael Keaton Batman is going to be the focus of this. This is The Flash, not Batman. But what we get here with Michael Keaton, I thought that it was fun. And I'm somebody that actually doesn't have a whole lot of nostalgia for those Burton films. They're not among my favorites, never have been. And so if you are a huge fan of Michael Keaton's Batman and those early films, you might even have a better experience with it than I did. And I especially like Sasha Kaye as Supergirl, as Kara. Now, this is a character that I have little to no knowledge about. I always assumed Supergirl was just <laughs> quite literally the female version of Superman, but especially with with James Gunn explaining the version of Supergirl that he's going to be going after and me looking into it a little bit more. Very different character. A lot more there to be had than just Superman with blonde curls. And so I really liked her take on this character. I It's kind of a shame that I think that we're probably not going to see her again. I'm assuming that James Gunn has a different idea, a different iteration in mind because I would have really liked to see her go on, get her own franchise, and if this was intended to be that, like an introduction of a character that we're going to see much more of later on, it was a hell of an introduction. She held her own against the two much bigger names in the movie, and she kicks ass alongside something you would expect Henry Cavill to do if he was in this film, and I just like that darker attitude that she brought to Supergirl, which I kind of like the darker version of Superman too, so... Maybe that's just me. I had a lot of fun with the action sequences here. There's a nice variety. You get a lot of it that has to do with the speed force, obviously being this is a Flash film, and so seeing some of it slow down and seeing the Flash do certain manipulations of people and objects around to complete a fight or to take on a, gr a group of people was really entertaining. Even the Batman stuff, you're able to see Michael Keaton's Batman do much more than we've ever been able to see him in the previous films just because of the advancement of technology. And so you get a nice variety. You get Superman type action, aliens fighting aliens, and laser beams, and flying and then you get the Batman more ground level gritty fighting and then the Flash just going all over the place in less than a second. So a nice variety visually in the action. I thought The Flash was paced out really well too as these superhero films have gotten longer and longer, especially more recently. A lot of them have tended to feel a bit more bloated to me and haven't really earned their runtime. This is 
hovering around two and a half hours and it covers a lot of ground. And at no point was I ever bored or starting to get that kind of sinking feeling like, okay, we need to wrap this up soon. They kept changing up what was going on throughout the three acts of the film enough to where I was always engaged, entertained, and looking forward to what was coming next. Even when the credits rolled, I was like, you know, I could have spent another 20 minutes in this. I also appreciated that the elements that are sure to come along when you have a multiverse movie and even a time travel movie like this, all of the aha moments, the Easter eggs, the fan service, I appreciated the fact that all of it was done very well here. None of it felt cheap. None of it felt like just it was paint being smeared over the mistakes of the movie or the flaws of the movie just to try to confuse everybody into being excited and thinking they're watching a good film. I said this very recently, just four or five days ago, in fact, with Across the Spider-Verse, that they did a really good job with that as well when a lot of the movies of the past couple of years have not. Fan service and cameos have kind of plagued camp comic book movies here lately as far as my own taste where it's just being a bit of a crutch and not actually coming in naturally and just almost being effortless and the flash did not do that every moment that was meant to be a big crowd pleasing moment pleased the crowd every moment that was meant to be a big hilarious cameo absolutely worked on my audience and i would assume that when this does play wide in front of audiences next week most theaters are going to get the reaction that my theater got and finally, I really enjoyed the soundtrack and especially the score to this. I like the score that they gave for The Flash. You have other characters' scores that are bled in here, some of which have already kind of been in the trailers again with Michael Keaton Batman. Uh, but there's times where they do this really seamless transition as the visual is focusing from one character to another, even within a battle scene to where they transition the score and it all feels natural. It doesn't feel like somebody just needle dropped onto another score. It feels like it's all one cohesive piece of music. And it was really cool. It was interesting and it achieves that real power that you want in a good superhero score while also achieving a lot of that nostalgia. <laughs> Moving on to the mixed, I'm still not 100% sold on Ezra Miller's version of Barry Allen. I think that they do very good in their performance, as I've already stated, but I still think that Ezra's version of Barry Allen is a bit too goofy for my taste. And the movie in and of itself, because of that, is a bit too goofy for my taste. Now, it is a very funny movie, and most of the jokes landed. There was some really big laughs in my theaters, and there was more than a few times that I audibly laughed at what was going on. But there was also quite a bit of humor that completely fell flat for me. And it kind of had a bit of a Marvel problem, not to keep comparing it to Marvel, but just this is an easy comparison to make, to where a lot of the dramatic elements of this movie felt like it was followed too soon by a goofy joke. And though that feels at home with this version of The Flash, there were so many moments that were the, the story was dramatic and emotional. It was kind of the darker elements of what is going on that I kind of wanted to stay in a little bit more. I felt like it would have brought more of a balance to this movie and it would have helped this feel a lot more in line with the movies that we've seen flash in before, namely the Zack Snyder movies. And because this was so focused on being comedic and lighthearted, it just kind of undercut some of those dramatic moments for me. I mean, quite literally the most emotional moment in this film that is very effective and got me choked up within 60 seconds is followed up by a very goofy, visual gag of Ezra just scarfing down a hot dog. The other mixed element is that this film might be the most successful of the DCEU so thus far at being a universe film. DC has always struggled in my mind with trying to do the MCU thing, trying to have the greater universe, because there have been such battling tones. Now, I like the independence, I like the variety that we've had, but when you have things that are very dark and mythic and serious, like the Zack Snyder stuff, and then it's stacked against things that are really goofy, like the octopus drums and Aquaman and things like that, anytime this universe has tried to bring characters together, it's always felt tonally off to me. And it still does here, that's why it's mixed, but this does the best job at bringing all those elements together and bringing those characters together. 
and making me believe that they all exist within the same universe without it feeling just totally foreign to what we have seen before. And so it's kind of a shame that this movie is too little too late, that this universe is already kind of in the past and we're just kind of cycling through the last remnants of it before it gets rebooted into something different. And even if it wasn't, all of the behind the scenes drama would make a sequel to this highly unlikely anyway. It's a shame that they finally seem to get the mix right and they finally started to figure out how to make all this work as a universe and could potentially bounce off of that and continue that success forward. It's a shame that this movie is the one that finally got it right when we're quite literally at the end now. Now the other side of that is why I'm still very hopeful for the reboot version of the DC universe is that there's still a lot of difficulty and battling tones when you try to bring these characters together. This is the most successful, but it's still not 100% successful. When Zack Snyder's work, which I'm a big fan of, is the groundwork for all of this, and since then they have tried to force it into something that's much more mainstream, much more crowd-pleasing and lighter toned and you know, somewhat mimicking the family-friendly, crowd-pleasing approach that MCU has had, and they've had some success with it, when you try to have that tone of a movie and those tone of characters mingling in the events of a much darker and much more serious and grounded film, it doesn't always come together quite right. There's a bit of a square peg and round hole effect to trying to get those things to commingle even in the flash. Moving on to the negatives, and I gotta tell you, I don't know if this is just in Andy Muschietti style, or if this is like a curse that follows this guy, or if he has one special effects department that he likes to work with and is just hasn't let them go yet. But the CGI in this film is fucking rough. Not all of it. I mean, there's some really good CGI. There's some really convincing stuff, but the stuff that isn't looks terrible. I mean, PS3 graphic level terrible. And it was to the point where it looks so bad and it looks so goofy and cartoonish that I struggled to figure out if that was a stylistic choice and they were just trying to lean into the goofy side of CGI or if it was just quite literally unfinished. But with a movie that's been delayed and been sitting around for so long while they figure out how the hell they're gonna market and do press and everything with everything going on behind the scenes, it was disappointing to see the final product and see that they didn't put more time into making sure that that stuff looked better when anybody with eyes could tell you that it does not look very good. There's sequences where Barry is inside of the Speed Force and you're seeing like the events of his life circling around him and they just look god awful. And even more so, being that we have two versions of Ezra in this film, every single scene where they're both in camera in the shot, you can always tell which one is the CGI additive and which one is the actual real Ezra in camera. And that's very odd when we've done much more convincing versions of that going all the way back to the 90s and like the parent trap and shit. So how the hell they struggled with that blows my mind. And while I was entertained throughout the entire movie, the second half of the film wasn't near as appealing to me personally. Now that's probably going to be the more crowd entertaining side of things because that's where it's more of a superhero film. That's where you get Michael Keaton's Batman. That's where you get Supergirl and all of the Man of Steel events. But the first half of this film was the more personal side. That was the Barry Allen's focus stuff where he was focusing on his story and his mom and trying to save her life and the time travel and the butterfly effect and all of that. And that's the much more appealing side of the story for me. So while I liked all of it, the second half is much more of your traditional comic book flashy movie. No pun intended. And I just wish they found a way to kind of keep that tone balanced. Like I like the big spectacle, I like the big action sequences and the, the large scale stuff, but abandoning the more personal side of things for almost half of the film seemingly, I, I wish they would have balanced that out a little bit more. It would have been damn near perfect for me. I tried phrasing this one probably four or five different ways. It kept feeling like I was leaning a little bit too far into spoilers. So all I will say is that in the last 12 to 15 minutes of this movie, there are a number of things that I did not care for at all. The execution of certain characters, the place that we end certain characters, a tonal choice for the end of the film. I will get into specifics in my spoilers the review that I will have ready next week for the release of this film when it goes wide. And my final negative is that I did not enjoy the second Barry Allen at all. Now, I appreciate the fact that there were two very distinct personalities, two very distinct performances, and I think that Ezra, again, does a good job at doing that. But where I feel like this movie was a good opportunity to kind of mature up 
that version of Barry Allen and kind of get rid of some of those younger, more immature and goofier elements and kind of bring a little bit more adulthood, a little bit more of a heroic sense to that character. They don't necessarily do that as much. What they do is they make the secondary Barry even more immature, even more goofy, even more dim-witted, and even more annoying, so that by association, you look at this character and automatically think that Barry Prime is suddenly more mature and less annoying and less goofy, and they're really not. So that approach in and of itself just felt kind of lazy and was a bit disappointing for me, but the character himself was just incredibly annoying. Just the level of stupidity of some of the things that this character says is a trope that annoys me. Like, dumb can be funny sometimes, but when you're making fully functional human beings dumb on a level that makes no sense, that's a trope that I don't get entertained by. And the laugh that Ezra decided to give this secondary Barry, oh my God, it grated on my nerves so bad. It was like one of the fish in SpongeBob. Every time this character got a chuckle, just... <laughs> and with all that being said, guys, I enjoyed this movie overall. I had a seriously good time with it. I mean, there are things about it that obviously bugged me. There are things about it that I would have done differently. I wish they would have done differently. But overall, it was a very entertaining experience that my overall feeling is just kind of like, wow, what a shame. What a shame that this movie is as good as it is with the behind the scenes drama and the uphill battle that it has had and the placement that it has had. Because literally everything is working against this film. I mean, you have Ezra's maniacal thing going on with the crime spree and you know, hopefully they're finding recovery, but I don't see any version of reality where they come back and play the Flash again, even if they get fully recovered. I just think of a PR nightmare, no matter what. And even with the DC reboot on the horizon, you know, I think that there is enough that you can do with the Flash character to where they realistically could have carried this on as a franchise running alongside the newly rebooted DC Universe and done two or three Flash films where he kind of co-mingles and has cameos from DC stars of the past and DC stars of the future. And they could have done some really successful things with that. This could have been a really solid franchise easily everything just made sure that that wasn't going to happen from Ezra to the timing of the reboot to even just the timing of the release of this film to where this was shot in 2021 it was written even before that and the, how long that script was sitting around I don't know but now it's being released today in 2023 and it's like the fourth or fifth multiverse film that we've gotten in the past couple of years I mean we got one just five days ago when I'm recording this and so by the time it comes out it's kind of like a bit of a been there, done that concept, which is just a shame because this is one of the better executed versions of that. So that's the ultimate feeling that I have here is that it's a very enjoyable film that a lot of hardcore DC fans of many different iterations are going to have a hell of a good time with. A lot of families are going to have a hell of a good time with it, but it's just kind of all for nothing. It, 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 it's all for nothing. Well, that does it for this one, guys. If you enjoyed that, please click over here for all my 2023 new release reviews so far. I'm also going to put my review of Shazam 2 up here, the last DC movie. I will do a spoiler review, get more in detail when this movie actually releases to the public in a week or so. And please like, share, hit that subscribe button so you do not miss that video. And as always, remember, opinions are like assholes, but that doesn't mean you have to be.